Hey everybody, Lena here, and I want to thank you for joining me for our weekly meditation. Now our scripture for this week is Luke chapter 23, verse 45. And before I read the scripture, let me just give you a little background of what's going on here. Uh, this scripture, uh, this week, we're actually going to be talking about the temple and the fact that the veil has now been torn. And so, again, just to give you a little background of uh, the temple, it was in Jerusalem. And this is where the Jewish people, this is where the nation of Israel, they would go to make their sacrifices, you know, their animal sacrifices and things like that to God. You know, uh, this is where they would go and they would receive word and stuff like that. Um, this is where the priests were at. And and so that's where this scripture is about. It's talking about the temple. Just to give you a, a kind of idea of the temple and the layout of the temple, you had basically three main areas. You had the outer court, okay? And in the outer court, anyone was allowed in the outer court. You didn't have to be Jewish. You know, you could be anyone. Anyone was allowed in the outer court. Uh, they did not have to have a relationship with God or with the nation of Israel in any way, shape or form. Then you had the inner court. OK, in the inner court, this is where all the Jewish people were allowed. All the nation of Israel, any people who had um, converted to Judaism, anyone who was in relationship with God, only those in relationship were allowed in the inner court. Amen. Boy, that'll preach. And then you had the most holy of holies. And in the most holy of holies, no one was allowed. Now you had priest, you know, of the temple. And then you had the high priest. The high priest was the only one that was allowed to go into the most holy of holies. And he was only allowed to go into the most holy of holies one time a year. And that was when he was making the sin offering of atonement for the people. Okay. And what separated the most holy of holies from the inner court and the rest of the temple, there was a large curtain. People, you know, say it could have been anywhere from 60 to 90 feet tall. Okay. So it was this gigantic enormous curtain you know and if you read about um how the temple was built i mean this curtain it could have weighed hundreds if not thousands of pounds i mean because it's 60 to 90 feet tall it had gold woven in it i mean this was like a serious curtain okay it wasn't like one of the little curtains we have hanging on our, our on our windows today i mean this curtain was massive 60 to 90 feet amen and it had gold and all of these different things woven into it okay so that's just giving you the background for our scripture so now our scripture luke 23 45 says and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. Okay. And again, this is, this scripture also is referring to when Jesus was being crucified. Okay. The veil spoken of here reached from the ceiling to the floor and from wall to wall and separated the Holy of Holies from the holy place in the temple. Okay. So just again, get an image of this huge, enormous curtain that reached from the ceiling to the floor and from wall to wall, completely um, separating the most holy of holies from the rest of the temple. Now Solomon's temple was 30 cubits high, and we can see that in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 2. But Herod increased the height to 40 cubits according to the writings of Josephus. And Josephus was a first century historian. Therefore, depending on what standard you use to convert cubits to feet, this veil was somewhere between 60 to 90 feet high. Now, it is significant that this veil was rent from top to bottom, and we can see that in Matthew chapter 27, verse 51, or Mark chapter 15, verse 38. The significance of the fact that the veil was rent from top to bottom, it signifies that no man could have torn the veil in this fashion. It was definitely God that rent the veil. The, the time when this veil was rent corresponds exactly with the moment Jesus died. Okay, so the moment Jesus died, the veil was torn. The, it was torn from top to bottom signifying that it was God himself. Because remember, again, this curtain was some 60 to 90 feet tall. Okay, so no, it's not, in, I mean, this curtain was heavy, it was huge. So it was not something a man could just tear. This was, so when this, when Jesus died and it coincided exactly with the moment when Jesus died, when he took his last breath, when he died, the veil was torn uh, from top to bottom. And if you read that description, and I'm gonna have it uh, and if you read that account, and I'm going to have it in the description below, it says that the earth began to shake, you know, rocks broke apart. I mean, this was like a massive thing that was going on here. This was a, a true act of God. 
Okay, uh, Hebrews chapter nine, verses one through nine tells us that the veil separated the Holy of Holies where God dwelt from the rest of the temple where men dwelt. This signified that man was separated from God by sin. And we can see that in Isaiah 59 verses one through two. Only the high priest was permitted to pass beyond this veil and only one time a year. And again, this was uh, during the time when he was making the sin offering, you know, the offering of atonement for mankind to cover our sins for the forgiveness of our sins for a year. Okay, and so now this symbolized the Christ who would enter into God's presence for who would enter into God's presence for us, for mankind and make an atonement. So again, just to give you kind of a mental picture, you have the high priest here and only the high priest is allowed to go in to the most holy of holies. And the word tells us that Jesus is now our high priest. Amen. And so this high priest was symbolic of Jesus going into the most holy of holies in the most holy of holies. That's where the Ark of the Covenant was. And the Ark of the Covenant uh, contained, the, it represented the presence of God. Amen. And so only the high priest could go into the presence of God once a year to make atonement or to make an offering for mankind to cover our sins and when the high priest went in he had to take blood with him and he would sprinkle this blood to cover our sins amen glory be to god and all of that was symbolic of what jesus would eventually do for us when he came to the earth and he died on the cross so jesus the lamb of god that was slain before the foundations of the earth when he was crucified on the cross, amen, when he died, when he took his last breath, that's when that veil was torn, torn from the top to the bottom, symbolizing that sin had been covered once and for all. Jesus, the Lamb of God, shed his precious blood, amen, to cover all of our sins, all of our sins, past, present, and future. When Jesus died, the word of God says, when Jesus died, he died once for all times, for all mankind. It was a one and done. <laughs> that was it. Jesus died. He shed his precious blood and all of our sins were covered. Therefore, sin is no longer an issue with God. You know, Dale and I did a video talking about that very thing. And I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. But when Jesus died, that signified that that separation between man and God was done. That's why the veil was torn. And now in the word, I believe it's in Hebrews. It says that it's actually, I believe it's Hebrews chapter four, six. It says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. See before this, like I said, only the high priest could go in to the most holy of holies go in to where the uh, the Ark of the Covenant was to where the presence of God dwelt once a year. But now, and if, and if the high priest, you know, if he hadn't made, you know, atonement for his sins and, you know, he wasn't right with God when he went in, he would be immediately struck dead. And if anybody else tried to go into the most holy of holies, I mean, they would immediately just fall dead. I mean, man was not allowed into the presence of God. Okay. Before Jesus died. But now after Jesus death, after his blood has been shed, amen. All of our sins, past, present, and future have been forgiven. Sin is no longer an issue with God. Hebrews is saying here, now we can come boldly to God's throne of grace. We don't have to fear if we go, you know, something is going to happen to us. We can walk boldly in now to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Amen. Glory be to God. So I have here the moment that Christ died, the veil was torn in two, revealing that the sacrifice had been made and that there is no longer any separation between God and man. Jesus tore, tore the veil, that is to say his flesh, and we see that in Hebrews 10, 20, in two and opened up a new way unto God through himself. The word also says that no man can come to the father, you know, except through Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the way. Amen. So for those of us who are now born again, who are in Christ, man, we can now feel free to come boldly to the throne of grace. Whenever we need, we can go before the father freely and know that sin is no longer an issue between man and God. The veil has been torn. Jesus, the lamb again, the lamb of God that it was slain before the foundations of the earth. His blood has been shed. It was sprinkled on the altar. Amen. And so once and for all time, that is, is a done deal. It is done. It is finished. And, and I'll actually put that scripture in the description below as well. So guys, whenever, so don't allow yourself to get into condemnation. 
you know, about anything, feeling guilty, thinking, oh, I'm just a sinner. I've just, you know, done this horrible thing and now God won't deal with me anymore. All of our sins, past, present, and future have been covered. They have been covered under the blood. And now when God sees us, he sees us through the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's what I was talking about in uh, last week's weekly meditation. When God looks at us now, he's looking at us through the, the lens of the blood of Jesus. Amen. And through the lens of the blood of Jesus, we are clean. Amen. All of our sins have been, been forgiven and we look just like Christ. The word says that we are now clothed with Christ. Amen. So don't allow condemnation and guilt to get in to get on you don't think that there's anything that you've done that's just so terrible and so bad that God will never forgive you and he'll never you know deal with you again it's all been covered under the blood come boldly to the father's throne of grace to his throne of mercy to receive grace and to receive mercy to receive guidance to receive help amen so guys on that note I'm going to go ahead and close for today because I don't want this scripture to be too I don't want this um weekly meditation to be too long. But like I said, I will put all of these scriptures in the description below. Guys, definitely. Uh, I encourage you look these scriptures up, man, write them out, meditate on them. Ask the Holy spirit as always to give you, you know, revelation on this. Cause this is some good stuff. I get so excited. Uh, when I talk about the temple, Del and I are actually going to do a series, you know, um, just discussing the temple and all the symbolism. Cause it was so much symbolism in the temple in the tabernacle amen so guys on that note i'm going to go ahead and close today if you found value in this video then please like comment share subscribe uh please go check out our website you know uh we have a facebook page and if the lord puts it on your heart to give we have a support button there as well please you know go ahead and give into the ministry to support us you know we appreciate anything that comes in if you have any prayer requests um if you have just any comments in general if you have any questions whatever we are here for you uh, I will put our contact information in the description below as well. We are here for you to help serve you, to serve the body of Christ. We are just yielded vessels here for the Holy Spirit to flow to and through to be there for you. So guys, again, I'm going to close on that note for today. Thank you so much for watching and as always, continued blessings.